Okay, um, as you can see in the coping video, I don't really instruct or talk a lot, mostly because I'm focusing on the bird and what I'm doing that I don't want to take my attention away and do something stupid and injure Leroy or do something really terrible. So um, you can see that in the video I do clip his beak. Um, you don't want to go too short, obviously. So because I'm not using a real bird, I'm going to use an educational skull that I have. This is actually a golden eagle skull that I use for education. So you want to just where, you know, you don't want to go way up here, obviously. So I don't think I have to cover that too much. But what I do want to point out that's important, I don't know if you notice that when I put um, my, when I go to secure his head to do his beak, um, and you can do this with the birds laying down on his back and you can hold the head like this you know or your helper or well you can because you're the one doing the coping and then you can do that and you can do this I, it's hard for me because I can't gauge what the beak looks like when it's upside down so I actually do the um, bird while they're sitting upright just like you see Leroy so the lower mandible should be wired to this skull but it's not um, so you can see I stick my thumb in there in between his um, mouth and I do that a to keep his mouth open because that's what you want because it's hard to do it with it closed um, but also you can see where his tongue kind of stuck out and so that's also I use my thumb or sometimes you'll see me put my finger in there depending on whatever however I'm doing it but I always have either my thumb or my finger stuck in there so that way um, it's protecting his tongue because the last thing you want to do is have that Dremel rolling and it wrap up around his tongue or burn his tongue because you can hear in the video um, I said ouch and that's because I actually dremeled my thumb right there because I remember when that happened. Um, and you don't want that on, in their tongue. And it's just A, it hurts. And B, it can cause a, a real problem and, and an infection and uh, maybe cause them not to eat properly. You just, you know, stay away from problems like that. So that's why you see me stick my thumb right there. And then what you do to open, and they're stronger than you think, is you don't do it out here. Is You want to do it right here and then that's where you kind of just stick your finger in there and get them to open their mouth and stick your finger in like that so and then that way um, you also see that I'll start working right here I always start right here because it's you know you can do both sides equally and you can get that curve that comes around um, the one thing that also I need to point out that you don't want is you know that Dremel is going pretty quick and it's you know it, it is creating a lot of friction which is why it works but you don't want to leave it in one spot too long or on the bird's beak for too long because it, it heats up you'll so you'll burn the bird there's a lot of um, you know sensitive spots right there and you just don't want to burn the bird um, and just yeah don't leave the Dremel in one spot too long so just kind of work for a little bit and you'll see me do that I'll work for a little bit and then just kind of pull it away and then you'll also see me in the video a lot blow like that on the bird because dust starts getting there and you have to remember um, when the bird's mouth is like I have this upside down when the bird's mouth you know so this is the bird's mouth when you got it open that little hole right there that's actually their trachea and I, I'm pretty sure most of you guys know that but just in case um, so that's, you know, and that's kind of like a snorkel. So when they're trying to swallow something riddle really big, it's like a snorkel so they can still breathe. So that's why you hear the <laughs> when they get really uh, greedy and piggy and get a very big bite. So that's what that's for. And then when they close their mouth, they, there's an opening right here, which in the education school, there's not. Um, yeah, there isn't one. But anyway, um so, you know, you don't want dust and, I mean, because their beaks are dirty and it is particles and you don't want that breathing or um, them inhaling that and going down into their lungs and it's just uncomfortable. So if you're already stressed out, the last thing you want is a bunch of um, stuff going into your lungs. So I'll blow it away 
And then also Leroy, well, most of my birds are pretty good at keeping their eyelids um, shut or they'll cover it with their nictating membrane. But you'll also see I'll kind of, you know, I'll try to cover their eyes if I can because uh, you just don't want, you know, that fine particles going into their eyes either. So you'll see me in the video blowing a lot and that's what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, that's what you see me doing. And then, um, you know, there's probably some debate as to whether clipping the, the, the tip down is a good idea. Um, a lot of, especially vets, prefer it to be dremeled down. But that's just, to me, that just takes too long. And with, with this type of um, thing, well, any type of thing, when you've got a bird casted for any reason, it needs to be quick because it's very stressful for the bird. And the last thing you want is a bunch of stress on the bird. You just need to be quick. It's not time to chit chat and, you know, take your time. They're, they're not, they're not pets. It's not fun for them. And it can, in, in some species, it can be actually detrimental if you stress them out that much. This is also why I don't do this during the molt if I can help it. Because when you've got new blood feathers coming through and you know, Leroy, he gets pretty stressed out. This is one of the few things that really stress him out. He doesn't like to be casted. Um, really, he doesn't handle it as well as you would think. And he's my bomb-proof bird. I mean, you can almost do anything with him. He just doesn't like to be casted. So I try to do things very quick. But if you've got um, blood feathers coming in and they're pumping out cortisol, which is the stress hormone, that's where the stress marks in the feathers come through. So you don't want that during the molt because they got brand new feathers and they're not going to get new brand new feathers you know until the next molt so the, you know the last thing you want to do is to start out the season with a bunch of stress marks and they'll probably break their feathers during the season very soon so that's why I'm pretty hands off even though I handle my birds all throughout the molt um, I, I keep the stressful stuff down to a bare minimum so in the next video you'll see coral She's like a, a huge honking beak. It was really long. And her talons were the longest I think I've ever seen them. Um, usually I don't have to do much with their talons, but this year for whatever reason I did. I don't know, maybe the food. You know, because during the molt they're getting lots of nutrition. Their beaks and their talons are just growing like crazy. So that's why I do this when I get them ready for their you know, upcoming season. It's because they've been through the molt and their stuff's just been growing like crazy. So... Um, I do clip it off and I try to make it as, you know, you'll see me trying to shape it as a point as much as possible. And then I do everything else with the Dremel. So I'll start out, you know, clip the tip so I know where I'm going. And that's kind of your marker. And then I kind of do this so I can get that hook shape. Um, and in on the bird, and I'll throw up a picture of the differences between somebody that coped it was a bird and they didn't do the sides and I'm very picky about my birds beaks I really want them to look perfect so um, and it you know they didn't do the sides they did the tip so it was like you know shaped like this it was just I always make sure the sides are just as perfect as the tip, so that's important. And um, I'll throw up a picture of, you know, what it should look like. And it's like halfway, so their beak should be, I don't know if it'll really show on this education one, maybe a little bit. So you kind of see they'll be like half the mandible. You know, half the mandible right there will be showing. And then, like with the Harris Hawk, there's kind of like this, it goes up a little bit, and then there's like this little dip. So in, you need to, when you get your bird, like say when it's brand new or, when, you know, whatever, and that's the perfect way the beak is supposed to look, and um, take a photo of it so you can remember what the beak is supposed to look like. Um, like with falcons, you know, they've got that notch. And when Finley was a baby, I did take a picture of his beak, so I will always know what his perfect beak looks like. 
thank goodness I've never had to cope his beak because I, you know, that's like microsurgery and I'm not really interested in doing microsurgery on him. So when his beak gets a little long, usually the tip gets long. The other stuff doesn't get real long. The tip gets long. And so what I'll do is I'll just give him a lot of quail heads and a lot of mice and, you know, that basically, you know, moves it all back up that way. But, um, yeah, because that notch would be a pain in the butt on a tiny bird like that. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to jump in and um, kind of talk about this when I'm able to do it with, you know, fake head and not during the video. But you can kind of see um, what I'm doing here. Just remember, don't leave it anywhere too long because it will burn. Manage the tongue. Stick your thumb in there. Keep the tongue away. If you see the tongue, you know, coming out too much, stop. You don't want to, you know, wrap the tongue up and, you know, blow the dust out of their nares, their throat, their eyes if you can. Just, you know, blow a lot. And, think. and with the equipment, um, so you can see the Dremel that I'm using. I set it on three. So it's low. You know, it's turning low because you don't want it so fast because then when it's going so fast, it'll like, pshit, and you don't have as much control. Um, it creates a whole lot more heat, so you don't have as much time um, to sit there and, and do that. So I do mine around three, but you don't want it so slow that it just doesn't do anything. Um, also, for whatever species you have, you want to make sure that the Dremel bit is the good, you know, a good size. And, um, you know, it needs to be able to get in there. And you need to be able to do, you know, good shaping. So the sh um, the Dremel bit size is important too. So the setting of my Dremel is on three. And also you can see the the nail clippers that I use. They're just dog clippers that you can get at PetSmart. I think I actually got those off of Amazon. But they're the ones that are kind of curved, you know. So they have the they're like a C shape on each side. So that way when you clamp down, it's not like the guillotine style where it just comes down and that just compresses and crushes everything. So also you don't want to use that when you're imping your feathers because otherwise you're going to shatter the, the feather shafts. So you don't want it to squeeze the feather. You know, same thing with their beak or even their talons. It just doesn't, the guillotine style is just, it's more painful. It crushes stuff and um, splinters a lot. So you want the C-shaped blades and then I don't know if you noticed in the video but um, I have a Pyrex you know a little dish with a green lid on it and that's full of cornstarch and whenever I'm doing anything like this I always have that with me so if I do quick one of my birds or you know if I get and now I've never gotten so up into the beak that that would even be possible um, if you ever do that you should probably never cope your bird again <laughs> Because that's, you know, yeah. Anyways, it's it can be easy to quick a bird. You, know, you just need to know what you're looking for. And if you do quick a bird, um, especially the little ones, they can bleed to death. But just have that cornstarch and just pack it in, pack it in, pack it in. It's not toxic. There is stuff like called quick stop. But from what uh, my understanding is, is that it is, it can be toxic to birds and that you probably shouldn't use it. And that um, there's something else that's better. And I cannot remember the name. It's purple something. Potassium promanganate, I believe. Um, that's actually better, but it's hard to find. So I've never been able to find it. You probably get it from your vet, maybe. But um, I just use cornstarch, and it works. Unfortunately, I've actually never had to use it. But if I ever did, it's right there. So always prepare that something could go wrong and have it ready to go and... So that way you're not looking for it while your bird's bleeding. So, um, yeah, I think. And you also see in there I put, um, you know, something on their beak and their talons. That's uh, organic, unrefined, raw coconut oil. So it hasn't had anything done to it. It's organic. And it's really good. It keeps their beak soft. And, um, and then I also put, while I've got their feet, you know, while they're casting, you can see, I always check the bottom of their feet just to make sure there's not anything there. And as you can see with Leroy, he had a little spot. So that's, you know, when they hold their foot up, if they're, 
their back helix is a little long or pointy, they'll rest it and it just kind of, you know, goes in there and makes a little callus. And then if your perches aren't clean, that can actually introduce bacteria. And then that's where you get bumblefoot. Um, so you can see me kind of pull the scab off. And then I do clip the tips of his talons just a little bit to kind of, you know, back them up a little bit. And, um, of course, I grease him all up with coconut oil all over his feet. It's good to keep his um, feet healthy and moisturized. And also, uh, coconut oil has a mild antimicrobial property to it. So it's good for, you know, bacterial type stuff. And I think, and I, you saw I put them a little bit on the bird's nose or their sear. You know, it is Arizona. It does get really dry. And sometimes they'll get kind of flaky right there. So if I'm bugging them, doing something, why not? So I was just kind of put a little coconut um, oil on their sear. And Leroy likes to eat it. I don't know why, but he does. He likes to eat coconut oil. And after he does it, then his feathers are like real shiny. So it does make his feathers look really nice because, you know, oil. So I think that is about it in the video. So um, keep watching. And if you have any questions about anything that was done in the video, don't hesitate to reach out. And either in the comments, go to our website, email me. I always respond to questions. So don't hesitate. Okay, that's good. All right, I'm gonna grab him. I hate this part. I hate upsetting my birds. I don't mind upsetting other people's birds, but not mine. Okay, come on. I know, he's, I think he probably knows what's going on. All right. Okay, I wanted to point out because it, I can tell by the look, the way it looks in this video, it looks like the leash is just kind of dangling and I don't want to give that impression that the leash is just dangling. So I actually have his leash tied to my belt. So if my helper, whose name is Trevor, drops him or gets away from Trevor, or if Leroy got away from me, which um, hasn't ever happened, but it doesn't mean it won't. I always um, prepare and mitigate for the worst and always have a pretty diligent, strict, uh, no excuses, safety protocol that I practice all the time. And, and that is that I just wanted to point that out in this video. So this wing. There we go. You got his legs. There we go. Here, put one finger in between. There we go. Got it? But don't squish his legs. Right. right. Okay. I need glasses because I can't see. I'm sorry, sweetie. I know. He's not that terrible. Because... what we're doing. I'm sorry, big boy. I'm sorry. Hey, 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 hey. Put the tongue in. Can you see it still? Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, it goes dark after a while. Okay. I'm sorry.
sorry, sweetie. Okay. Okay, it's ouch. This side needs to be a little bit more. Okay. Come on. Keep your tongue in there. Take away. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit off that tip and then we're done. I think we're done. Uh, what happened here? I thought I got all that. Okay, back at it. I'm sorry, Leroy. He's like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm sorry, Leroy. I'm sorry, sweetie. Let's really get this down, but serious. Okay, I think we've got to be done. Okay, yay! All better. Good boy, Leroy. Okay. A little bit of coconut oil to make him pretty. And put on his here. He's going to be a little greasy. Let's check the bottom of his feet while we're here. Woo, look at those are handsome feet. Let's see. Talons are a little long. Oh, what's this? This is a little dot. From this. So let's do. Ooh, these are daggers. I know. Not that it really matters, but. Just do the edges, okay? Because you're poking the bottom of your feet. Okay. Hey, that's not nice. They are a little bit long, but. I know. Let's put this on the bottom of your feet. <laughs> I think he's ticklish. Are you ticklish? <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, that's coral, so I'm going to have to redo that. Okay. All done. He looks good. <laughs> yep, looks good, looks good. He's all greasy. Yeah, he likes to eat it. I don't know why. Turn this off. 